Put your hands together, start clapping, please. For Tom Tumblety! Hello. Welcome back to Comedy Virgins Night. Um, but if there's one place you're going to lose your comedy virginity, it's got to be Glasgow. People come from all over the world to Glasgow. Not to lose their virginity, you understand, but um, it, because it's such a great place. In fact, there's a friend of mine in the office who um, came from California and moved all the way to Glasgow. But that was an accident. Uh, it was a misunderstanding. He'd been surfing some websites and he read one and there was a, a slight typing error on it. And he came here absolutely convinced that Glasgow's favourite meal was minge and tatties. <laughs> Which proved to be something of a disappointment when he actually arrived here. Uh, it did lead to some awkward moments when he tried to place his order with the elderly lady waitress. Because <laughs> she couldn't understand his accent. <laughs> and then she did understand his accent. Um, and that's the last time he'll be allowed into Raganos. <laughs> so, but it's all right, he's young, he'll go over it. Uh, not so easy when you're older. Uh, because the media are obsessed with youth and young people. Like, take the riots back in the summer, for instance. Now, you'd film a people chucking huge rock through windows, grabbing 50-inch plasma TVs under one arm and legging it down the road like Linford Christie on speed. And there's the newsreaders, Jackie Bird with a serious face. You know. Police blame the gangs of youths for the disturbances. And that's not fair. It could easily have been marauding mobs of pillaging pensioners, high on Horlicks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe not. But it got me to thinking, what would happen if old people actually did start behaving the way that only young people are supposed to, like rioting. Where would they go? I mean, your, your young possum team, they're being ram raiding pound land, gas generators, you know, the upmarket places. But not the Bear Den and Mulgai Senior Citizens Association, no, 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 no. No, they'd be forming an orderly queue. <laughs> Outside Watt Brothers. And the Edinburgh Woolen Mill. Yeah. And they'd have the flask, the wee tartan flask and the sandwiches and the wee tartan shopping trolley and the wheels. Uh, and your neds would grab anything you can get their hands on. No, no, not the pensioners. They'd have a list. A wee pair of tartan slippers with the fleecy linings. Check. <laughs> nice tartan waistcoat. You know the bright yellow ones? Tasteful. Check. Nice tartan rug to spread in the back seat of the car. Check. Great. And then the young ones, they'd be out till all hours of the night. Not your pensioners, no. Half past eight at the latest back in George Square. You don't want to miss the last dial of us. <laughs> and you want to be back at nine because David Attenborough's on the telly. 85 years old and still making programmes. Respect. <laughs> Did anybody see Frozen Planet the other week there about polar bears trekking thousands of miles to spend winter at the North Pole? And I thought, why would polar bears go for a long, dangerous journey to spend winter in the Arctic? Because Edinburgh is fucking freezing. <laughs> and apart from that, who wants to live in Edinburgh anyway? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, no, I knew it was good to bring the family with me. Um, <laughs> but now, the Edinburgh is pissed off because they've lost their star attraction. And you'll have seen on the telly, they've had to pay a fortune to replace them with giant pandas. I don't get this giant panda thing. I mean, okay, there's David Attenborough again. Respect. <laughs> These shy, elusive creatures are close to extinction. I know, close your eyes, you'd think he was in the room, it's amazing. Um, as their wild habitat is destroyed, and it's impossible to get them to breed in captivity. Impossible to get them to breed? How hard can it be? Oh, you don't understand. The problem is that the female giant panda comes into heat. That is, she's receptive to the male's sexual advances only once a year. Problem? Only? The female is receptive to the male sexual advances once a year. There's married men in this audience. <laughs> You're sitting there thinking, lucky bastard. <laughs> uh, they're not actually saying it because they're sitting next to their wife and they're thinking, you know, tonight might actually be the men. <laughs> I've got news for you lads, no chance. <laughs> but it made me think, you know, what if you just treated pandas like people? You want the female to get pregnant? No problem. Put a used car in the enclosure, Ford Focus, Fiat Panda, you just thought of that. Um, <laughs> and names on the windscreens, and none of your stupid panda names like Poop 
Poo and Wee Wee and something like that. No, sensible names. Shuggy, Chardonnay. <laughs> nice tartan rug in the back seat of the car. You would come in handy. Um, bam, bam, ten months later, I named this baby back seat, giant enclosure, EH12 6TS. <laughs> McClumpha. So, the moral of tonight's story is be kind to animals and to old people. Well, except David Attenborough. Um, I mean, I know what I said earlier, but come on, 85. 85, my arse. The man is 28 days a day. He's just had a hard life. <laughs> he used to be a keeper. At a zoo, looking after giant pandas. And believe me, 28 or no 28, if you were the man responsible for making sure the female giant panda got pregnant, you would look like you were 85. <laughs> anyway, that's all I've got time for. You've been fantastic. I've been Tom Tallaghy. Thank you very much. Tom Tallaghy!